Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and I am here today with a video that is part of a fun Christmas in July themed collaboration. I hope you'll stick around, see who I'm collaborating with, and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. In pop culture, there are people that you can call by one name and everybody knows who they are. Like Madonna, Cher, or Adele. Well, in the crafty world, I think there are some of those people as well. If I said Jennifer or Gina or Christina, you're probably going to know who I'm talking about. Well, my partner today in this collaboration is kind of the same, and her name is Ardith. Now, if you don't already follow her here on YouTube and over on Instagram, I hope you will do that. I have those links in that description box below. Also, at the very top of the description box below is her video for today's collaboration. So don't forget when you're done here to go see what she has created. One of the things both of us like to do is take inspiration from other creators and make it our own. You know with me, I have Oh So Inspired live here with my sister Lisa, and for Ardith, it is limes. So today, since it is kind of a Christmas in July theme, I'm going to be using limes, and I'm going to turn it from a non-holiday card into a holiday card. Now, if you don't know what limes is, I will link artist playlist in that description box where she has used this same technique in many videos and goes over it. She has also provided a fun printable on her blog. Here is a look at the limes free resource from her blog. I will link the page below where you can find this. And she goes over what limes means. Basically, it's an acronym for list, include, modify, exclude, and spin. And this is just a way to take inspiration from someone else and make it your own so you're not copying it exactly and you're putting your own fun twist on it. Up on screen now is the card that I decided on for my inspiration today. I found this over on Artist's Instagram account and I will link directly to it in the description box. You're going to have so many links down there today, guys. So first of all, I want to list what I see on that card. I see the multiple die cut frames. It's a mini slim line. There is a big image in the center that is colored in. What I really liked about it were the die cut frames and that big image in the center. So that is what I'm going to include. I will also try to recreate the same effect with my sentiment. For what I'm going to modify, instead of using a pretty floral that I can color in, I'm going to be using more of a solid silhouette image. And instead of coloring it in, I'm going to be doing some ink blending around it for added color. Also, of course, since I'm going to make it a Christmas card, I won't be using the same sentiment in the middle. For exclude, I kind of did already go over that. I'm just not going to use multiple colors for my image. And finally, for spin, I don't know yet what I'm going to do, so we'll see where this card takes us. Let's go ahead now and take a look at the main supplies I'll be using for today's card. On the left is one of the stamp sets from Gina K Designs Sparkle and Shine card kit. This is from a couple years ago. I will see if this stamp set is available. I will be using this big image up here for my main focal point. As soon as I saw Artist card with all of those frames cut out, I knew that I had the perfect die set from Cat Scrappiness to use, so I grabbed this as well. As I add other products and tools during the process, I will be sure to let you know. But as always, don't forget if I leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below. Let's get crafty! 
To get started, I brought in a single piece of white cardstock. This is going to end up being my card base and the piece that I stamp and ink blend on to. To find out what size to cut my card base, I measured the largest of the dies from Cat Scrappiness, and that was three and a half inches wide by six inches tall. So I cut one piece of white cardstock to six inches tall by seven inches wide and then that piece that was left over I brought it in and cut it just a little bit bigger than that largest die. I'm going to be stamping my image today with Versamark ink and heat embossing it with Detail Silver Powder. Because I'm going to want to stamp it more than once to make sure it's nice and juicy for that powder, I did bring in my Misty. I want these to go in the upper left corners, so I just set it up once there. And then of course, before I do the stamping, I use my powder tool to make sure the powder sticks to only where I want it. I inked it up and stamped it twice, and then I brought in my tray and I poured my embossing powder over the top of it. Now the powder worked really well, but if you would ever notice any stray bits of powder, you could move those off with your finger or a dry paintbrush. Once the powder was on there, I heat set it with the heat tool. I usually like to start at the back before I bring it to the front to finish off melting. I rotated this piece around in my Misty and I used that same process to stamp and emboss the image on the other corner. And here's a close up look at that finished piece. I just love the shine on this. Now it's time to get some color added. I will be using red velvet ink from Gina K Designs and a waffle flower blending brush. I start in each corner of the cardstock and kind of make a light halo around the stamped area. Then I bring back in that blending brush with some ink and I try to concentrate more where the stamped image is and on the edges. After I had that first corner done, I rotated my piece of grid paper around and I did the same thing for the second corner. Now because some of the ink does sit on top of the embossing powder, I did bring in a rag and wipe that off. It just helps that silver stand out a little bit better. Now that my stamped piece was all ready, it was time to cut that up with the cat scrappiness dies. I took this off screen using each of the frame dies on the stamped and ink blended piece, and I also made a set in light gray cardstock. Here is a look at the two kind of put together, and you'll notice here that I would even have enough left over to do a second card. For now though, I'm just going to stick to the one. Off camera, I scored and folded the card base that I had cut earlier, and I added a little adhesive to the inside to help it stay closed while I worked on putting my frames together. To do this, I'm going to be using some liquid glue here in a fine tip bottle, and then I just go in, I add glue to the back of each piece, and add it to the card front. It's almost kind of like a little puzzle. Once all of those pieces were glued in place, I set a large stamp block on top of it and I let it dry for about 5 minutes before moving on. For my sentiment, I'm using Kohl's ABC dies from Lawn Fawn. I'm not sure if these are still available anymore. If I can find a link, I will put it in the description box below. I took the letters M, E, R, and Y off screen and I die cut the word Mary from a piece of red cardstock. The rest of my sentiment will be the word Christmas, which I'm going to stamp and heat emboss in silver on this scrap of red cardstock. I got out another stamp set from that same Gina K Designs card kit, and one of the stamps says Christmas Wishes. Since I only need the word Christmas, I brought in a sticky note, and before I inked up my stamp, I put a post-it note over the word wishes. Now I did have to make sure to remove that before I went to stamp it, and I did ink it up and stamp it twice. Then the rest of the embossing process is the same as before.
I brought in my Fiskars photo trimmer to cut this down to size and then before I placed it onto the card I wanted to add a fishtail in the left end. So to do this I just brought in a small pair of scissors and hand cut that fishtail. I spent a little bit of time figuring out where I wanted my stamped piece and my die cut letters to go for the sentiment. And once I had those in what I thought was a good space, I brought in my glitter glue again and I glued each of the letters in place. To add a little dimension to my piece, I brought in some thin foam tape and added a strip to the back of my fishtail piece. I cut off the excess and now here is kind of where I put my spin on this. And that is by using one of my favorite embellishments, the Elizabeth Craft Designs Glitter Dots. These are tiny stickers that are clear glitter in the center. And then I chose the ones with a silver outer ring. These are nice and flat for mailing and they are super economical. I added two trios, one in each corner of the card, and then off camera on the inside, I did do a little stamping on the inside. And here are some close-up looks at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to go visit Artist's video and see what she has created. I know that I am super excited. Once again, her link can be found at the very top of that description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.